A very good day and welcome to the program. It's just so good to be with you. I'm sitting outside my, my prayer room. I've got birds singing in the background. And um, I've got a special message for you today. And I really feel that this message is specifically for certain people. And you'll know exactly who you are, sir, who you are, madam. It is for you. I'd like you to take note and listen carefully. And I'm speaking particularly to Christians today. Not even seekers, but Christians. This word the Lord gave me in the early hours of this morning, and it's spoken to me, and I just want to share it with you. If we go to the book of Jonah, and I'm going to read a few verses, and then I'm going to speak about it. Jonah chapter 1, and from verse 3. Now remember, Jonah was called by God to go to Nineveh and to preach the gospel to the lost. Okay, but Jonah didn't want to do that. See, he was rebelling. So we start at verse 3, and this is what it says. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa. I've been to Joppa. They say it's the oldest seaport in the world. I think it's over 10,000 years old. To Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. And so he paid the fare, and he went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. What is the name of this program? You can't hide from God. Okay, then we go on to verse 10. You see what had happened then was the mariners, the sailors, had got caught in a big storm. And they could see this wasn't a normal type of storm. This was a huge storm. And straight away, they started to panic. And they started to pray to their gods. They had idols on that ship. And they were asking their idols to quell the storm. But they realized that there was more to it than that. They realized that there was something that they were doing that was wrong. Because the elements, okay, the waves, the sea was abnormally big. And the ship was about to sink. So they started throwing all their excess baggage over board to keep the ship afloat okay we go to verse 10 the men were exceedingly afraid and they said to jonah why have you done this for the men knew that jonah had fled from the presence of the lord because he told them why have you done this we go on to verse 12 jonah realized that the ship was actually sinking so he said to them pick me up and throw me into the sea, and then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. We go to Jonah chapter 2, and we look at uh, verse 2. And uh, Jonah says, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. There are some of you watching this program that are running from God and things are just going haywire and I want to say to you and I'm not a prophet of doom and gloom you know that they are not going to get better until you adhere to what God has told you to and some of you God's been telling you this for years and you've never ever obeyed the Lord but eventually after he'd been thrown overboard and uh, that big fish swallowed him up and he was in the belly of that whale for three days and three nights he says he even went down to Sheol Sheol is like hell okay and there was um, seaweed around him and he was in a terrible state he cried out to the Lord verse 2 of chapter 2 because of my affliction he says and then God answered him out of the belly of Sheol I cried and you heard my voice Verse 4, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. Lord, I am sorry. I am coming home. I'm coming back to do what you told me to do at the first, the first time. Verse 6, yet you have brought up my life from the pit. And then the last one is verse 9 of chapter 2. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. I will pay what I have vowed. 
I will go back and I will do what you told me to do because I realize the only salvation I have is in the Lord. And then just lastly, Psalm chapter 3 and verse 8. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. Why is it that you and I are looking for salvation everywhere but where we should be looking? Why are we trying to find peace and tranquility in material things? Why are we bucking the system? Why are you and me, why are we running away from the only one that can help us? His name is Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what happened to Jonah. You can't run from God. You know, they say you, 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 you can run, but you can't hide. You've heard that saying. You can run, but you can't hide. Especially in this day and age where we've got things like um, cell phones, iPads, computers. We can Google. I can Google your home. You can be living in Greenland. And we can zero right into your backyard. It's quite scary, but that's how it is. You, you can run, but you can't hide. The world has become so small now because of technology, much more than it was in the days of Jonah. And yet the same thing applies. You can run, but you cannot hide, especially from God. We must complete the task which the Lord called us to. I'm talking maybe to a pastor who's thinking of throwing the towel in. Sir, I want to tell you, don't do that. If God called you, God will do it. You say, but Angus, everything is closing in on me. Well, the answer is not to run away because that's exactly what Jonah tried to do. He was not going to go to Nineveh. He didn't want to go to Nineveh. He had no time for the people in Nineveh. He was hoping the people in Nineveh would perish like Sodom and Gomorrah. But God had a plan to save the city of Nineveh. And God called Jonah to do it. No one else. And we know the story. Eventually, Jonah did go to Nineveh, and they were all saved, and none of them perished. <laughs> and Jonah didn't like it. He was actually quite upset about it. You see, your ways and my ways are not always God's ways. If God calls you to do something, you need to do it. Yeah, but it's not working. It doesn't matter. God will tell you if you need to change, change your plans. We must fulfill our responsibilities. I'm talking to a young man who's contemplating divorcing his wife and running off with his secretary. What about your children? No, well, I've got my rights. You've got no rights, sir. When you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you gave all your rights to Him. Right? And I want to say to the older men, maybe more my age group, you've had your turn. Don't be selfish. Now it's the turn of your family. Yeah, but you know, I want, I want to live my life. I want to do things. You should have done that before you got married. There's no more time for that. I'm being straight with you now. You see, Jonah also wanted to do his own thing. He was going to run away to Tarshish. The Lord said, no, you're going to do what I told you to do. And it came at a terrible price. He talks about going down to Sheol. Sheol is another word for hell. He talks about seaweed around his face. He talks about uh, being inside a smelly belly of a big fish but you know something when he came to his senses he realized that there's no hope for me outside of God's will I want to say to you if you've made a commitment you need to keep to it doesn't matter what that commitment is okay you say well I'm going to immigrate I'm going to go to another place I'm going somewhere else I'm going to Zambia I'm going to um, Australia I'm going to Canada yeah you can go there but I can tell you right now nothing's going to change you say, what do you mean? Because the problem is inside you. The problem is inside me. It's not in the world. Those mariners on that ship, it wasn't their fault that the ship was going to sink. It was Jonah's fault. That storm came up because Jonah was disobedient to God. And some of us, when we are disobedient to God, we affect a lot of other people. You might be on a farm and you might think, well, there's no future for, for this country. What about all your people that have been faithful to you on that farm for years and years and years? Are you just going to walk away and leave them? What about that big business? You're going to close it down? And what about all the employees? Where are they going to go? You're going to leave that school because uh, the, 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 the students are not um, shaping up? That's not your responsibility. 
Your responsibility is to do what God told you to do. You say, my church is emptying. Well, you need to get on your knees and pray. It's not a time to leave the church, is it? You see, folks, God will be waiting for us <laughs> on the other side. So you're going to go to Canada, right? And when you arrive at that airport in Canada, whether it's Toronto, Vancouver, wherever it is, or you're sailing with that big ship at the harbor, who's going to be waiting for you? God will be there. <laughs> you can't hide from God. You can go to the top of Mount Everest. God's there. You can go into the deepest mine in the world. We've got some of the deepest ones in Johannesburg, by the way. Igoli. Deepest gold. You can go to the bottom of that mine. God's there. Why? Because God is inside you. So you can't run away from God. And if you want peace, peace comes through obedience. My peace give I unto you, the Lord says. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Therefore let not your heart be troubled, and neither be afraid. John chapter 14 and verse 27. Why does God not leave us alone? Because He loves us. Because it's for our own good. No, but I, I, I know what I want. You don't know what you want. That's why you're in such a mess. You need to find out what does God want you to have. It's for our own good that He requires us to face up to our commitments. I don't always feel like getting out of bed in the morning either. Neither does the film crew. We don't necessarily feel like it. It's not about what we feel like. It's about what God's called us to do. So we are preaching this message for you, not for us. Okay? You need to really understand that. We are being faithful. We are delivering a message to you today to save your life. I'm talking to a man who's going slip right down, sliding downwards, all the way down. And you're going to keep sliding until you say, enough. The devil wants to kill you. Don't you understand that? And the best way is to get you on the run. You just keep running. You know what they say? A rolling stone gathers no moss. You keep rolling, you've got no commitment to anybody or anything. Well, what's that? That is nothing. That um, very famous uh, rock and roll star, I think in the 1970s, maybe 60s, her name was Janis Joplin. She said, freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. She had nothing. I want to say to you, that when you are obedient to God and you stop running and you go back and you complete that which God's called you to, then you will understand what freedom is. Freedom is to be with Jesus. That's freedom. And to be on your own is not freedom. Ask Jonah. He knew. That's why he would land it up in the belly of a whale. We've got to face up to our commitments. We've got to work through that problem that you have with your marriage. Don't run away from it. Work through it together. Ah, oh, but Angus, it's too late. It's never too late. It's never too late. There are children involved, aren't there? Exactly. What are they going to do? Ah, oh, they'll get over it. They won't, you know. I know a lady who's 50 years old. She's a beautiful Christian. She's never had any children. She's happily married. You know why? Because she can't face up to it. Because she comes out of a broken marriage. A broken home. Her mother and father got divorced when she was a young girl and she's never got over it. One young girl came to my wife, another girl, many years ago when she found out that her father and her mother were getting divorced and she said, Auntie Jill, I've got no home now. Where do I go when I come back from university? Makes you want to cry. Work through that marriage commitment. What about that business deal? You started it. Now you want to run away. You can't run away from that business deal. Now I'll just declare myself bankrupt. What about all the people that you owe money to? What's going to happen to them? I know a man, and he's a very, very dear friend of mine. His name is Tommy. Tommy is a very, very successful businessman. He told me that when he was a young man, he was on the verge of bankruptcy. The accountants advised him to declare bankruptcy. Then he doesn't have to worry anymore. And then he can start again in his wife's name. Pay everybody a rand each. He said, no ways. He worked night and day until he paid everybody every cent he owed them and the interest. 
And God blessed him. Running away will not bring a blessing to you or your business or your family from God. There's no running away. When we are Christians, we stand because the battle is the Lord's. We need to honor our contract, whether it be business, whether it be marriage, whether it be a friendship, whatever that commitment is, we don't run away. Christians do not run away from their commitment. In the Garden of Gethsemane, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus was there with his disciples. The high priest sent his soldiers to come and arrest the master. When they arrived, the Bible says all of the disciples forsook the Lord. They, fors they, they forsook him and they ran away. All of them. All of them, including John, Peter, all of them. They ran away from the only person in the whole universe who could have helped them. What are you doing? Are you running away from the only person who can help you? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than saying sorry. Stick in there. I know as a farmer, that's one thing I did learn. It's about the only thing I learned about perseverance. When you put the crop in the ground, you are committed to that crop until you reap it. Why? Because you borrowed a large amount of money from the co-op or from the bank. You've put the fertilizer in. You've put the seed in. You've done the land prep. Well, it's not raining, but you still stay with that crop until you reap it. And that's how I managed to get through my farming life of over 50 years, by sticking with the crop. You don't put the plow in and say, oh, well, leave it. You've got to pay the bank. The only way you're going to pay the bank is with the crop that's growing. If you plow that crop in, you've got nothing. That actually happened to me once in Zambia many years ago. It was dry. My neighbor said, we're plowing in and we're going to start again. I said, I don't have any money to buy any more seed. So I took a, a, a scarifier. I pulled it behind my tractor. It's got like small iron teeth. It's a big, big, like almost like a, a flat um, cultivator. At high speed, I ran it over my field. I didn't even want to look because some of the maize was coming through. But it was so hard on the surface because there was no rain, the maize pips were turning around underground and going backwards and dying. I ripped that thing right from the top to the bottom, the whole crop. A week later, what happened? That's right, the rain came. That year, I had a bumper crop of maize. My friends had to go and borrow more money to buy more seed, more fertilizer, and then they were late. Because timing is what it's all about in agriculture. Their crops were very light because they never got the rain. I got a bumper crop. I refuse to give up. I want to say to you, stop running from God. Because you're running away from the only person in the world that can help you. His name is Jesus Christ. You say, no, well, I'll start again. You keep saying that, sir. How many times have you started again? Like the man that comes out of the, the court. He's just gone through another divorce. He's been divorced six times. He says, shame, she tried her best to help me. But she couldn't make me happy. It's not about you, sir. You see, he got it the wrong way around. Six times he got it the wrong way around. It's not about you. It's about God and about what he gives you. When you made a commitment, you put that ring on your hand, it stays there through thick and thin. And God will do the healing and the work. I want to close off before I pray for you with a scripture. It's taken from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11. And it's from verse 28 through to verse 30. Come to me, Jesus is saying to you. Talking to that lady who just says, I can't go on anymore. I'm talking to that man whose business is going insolvent. I'm talking to that farmer who says, it's just not raining. I'm talking to that person who thinks they're going to do better if they go to another country. Come to me, all of ye who, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. He's the best employer you could ever get. He's the best friend that you could ever have. He is strong, but he is gentle. 
and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What does that mean? It means there is a load to carry. When you come to Jesus, He never said you're not going to do anything. He didn't say you're not going to be tested. No, but He's saying to you today, honor the vow that you made to Jesus. Keep the promises you made to your family and your employees and your employer. And then God will bless every one of your endeavors. You see, folks, every time you run, you lose. Every time you sell up and you're going to move somewhere else, you lose. Every time. Now, if God tells you, I want to qualify this because otherwise I'm going to get some letters from some of you. If God tells you to go to Tarshish, then that's where you go. And God will bless you and there will be no storms that will sink the ship, okay? But if God hasn't told you and you're going to Tarshish to get out of the heat, as it were, it's not going to happen, okay? It doesn't work like that. What you've got to do is you must be where God wants you to be. Well, Uncle Angus, God hasn't told me anything. Well, then stay where you are. See? Did God tell you to divorce your wife? No. Well, why are you doing it? Exactly. Did God tell you to divorce your husband? No. Well, why are you doing it? God hates divorce. Yeah, but I'm already divorced. Where does that put me? Don't do it again. That's what it says. Don't go there again. God forgives. And then you must move on. He says, your sins have been forgiven. Go and sin no more and start afresh. I'm going to pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, I pray for my friends. It's a difficult, uh, yeah, it's a difficult story. And maybe it's a difficult program, but it's needful. Because there is no future for those who are continually running. And especially from you. So pray this prayer after me. Lord, please forgive me from not facing up to my obligations. Jesus, please give me the strength to stop running like Jonah did and go back and do the first thing that you told me to and give me the perseverance and give me the faith to see what's going to be the outcome eventually. I ask this in your precious name. Amen. Until the next time, God bless you and goodbye. Thank you for watching today's message by Angus Bucket. We trust that you were blessed. For more information about Shalom Ministries or upcoming events, please visit angusbucken.co.za. Have you downloaded the free Uncle Angus mobile app yet? You can enjoy more messages like this as well as exclusive content direct to your device. See you next time. Goodbye.